Friends, let's do the following. Show the solutions to the system of inequalities by graphing. Let's begin on the first one. It says y is less than negative 1 fourth x plus 2. Pretend it's an equation, so you can mark the boundary line. So y equals, in other words, negative 1 fourth x plus 2. Now, from there, you can, for example, either make ax plus by equals c that form. But you don't have to. You can just use slope and y intercept. Let me erase that, in fact. So B, the letter for the y-intercept, we often use this too. And the slope is negative one-fourth. Okay. So then we can mark this as follows. Now remember, because we have this symbol, that means it's got to be a dashed line. Okay. Uh, besides that, we, we also have to know where to shade, like kind of like above or below the line. So you can always choose zero, zero as your test point and you just plug it in. So zero less than negative one fourth, plug it into the original inequality, not into anything else. That's how you avoid any mistakes. Times zero plus two. So zero less than two, well, this is true, isn't it? That's important to understand because it's telling you you're gonna have to shade where zero, zero is located in that region then, okay? A line divides a plane like this one into two portions, you're gonna to have to shade in the portion, yeah, where zero, zero is located. So let's do that now. Okay, so where are we? Okay, so begin at two, and then go, let's see, four to the right, and then one unit straight down this way, like that. Now, we just have to dash this, as shown here, you see? And then the next part is, of course, to just kind of extend this, because it has to continue you know, off kind of in, multi, you know, in all the, across the whole plane. So I extend this a little bit this way, see? It kind of looks like this. Now we know because zero, zero makes it true, you have to shade below the line. However, it used to show you shading. Well, anyway, I have to do it by computer. So let me do that now. So this is going to be the way I'm shading here, okay? I'm shading this entire region because the point zero, zero is in this region that I'm shading. All right, I guess the idea crossed, here we are. Let's mark this. So we have this point here, zero comma zero. So it makes the equality, the original one true. Okay. Now let's go on to the next one. So it says four X minus six Y is greater than or equal to negative 24. First of all, notice you can just uh, divide each term by two because two is a common factor. So you're gonna have 4 divided by 2, which is 2x, right? 6 divided by 2 is 3y. And then negative 24 divided by 2 is negative 12. And now pretend it's an equation like this. So you can mark the boundary line. In this case, it's solid uh, because this symbol here, greater than or equal to, contains the equal to part, correct? So it's got to be a solid line when you mark the boundary. All right, let's move on. So you're going to have 2x minus uh, 3y is equal to negative 12. So when x is 0, you're going to have negative 3y equals negative 12 divided by negative 3. So y is positive 4. Now set y equal to 0, because that will isolate the value of the x-intercept. So you're going to have 2x equals negative 12 divided by 2. So x equals negative 6. All right, friends. Let's mark this now. So you're going to mark a line. It has to go to y equals 4 and x equals negative 6. It's just about that line right there. Okay? And it's got to be solid, again, because it's got the greater than or equal to part. Now I just have to decide where to shade in terms of this line. Let me close that. So let's do that. I'm going to, again, just test with the simplest form you can find, 0, 0. So let's do it. We're going to have z uh, 4 times 0 minus 6 times 0. This is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to negative 24. So work it. It's going to be 0 greater than or equal to negative 24. That's certainly true. Since that is true, that means you're going to shade, again, where we have the point 0, 0 located. Okay. So let's do that next. So I'm going to shade where we have the point 0, 0 located. Okay, so with respect to this line, that's this right here, okay, where I'm shading, right here. 
So hopefully you can tell there's one particular region that's emerging. Uh, this region, that would be the solution set right here, okay? So uh, solution set. Often we use a letter like, for example, R to refer to it, capital R. And that, of course, just stands for the word region because it's a region of the XY plane. Okay, let me drag this into position right here. Solution set R. And it might be a bit tricky to see, but I hope you can still see it. So, yeah, in that case, let me just kind of erase some of it around the writing so you don't get confused like this. You see, that's the solution set. Again, let me kind of perhaps emphasize the boundary line. So the boundary of the region of solution would be bounded over here by this, and then over here it would be bounded by this, by this dashed line. <laughs> Right here, okay, by this dashed line. And then any point here makes the system true. So, for example, I use 0, 0. It doesn't matter. Use some other point. You will see that it makes the system of inequalities true. Leave a like if it's been helpful.